Okay, now that you're familiar with solving not only right triangles using the Pythagorean theorem, but solving special triangles, now we're going to get into solving for angles. Now, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to set up uh, a lot of different types of problems as far as solving for uh, the longest leg, the shortest leg, the hypotenuse. Uh, but one thing that it doesn't do is give you help when you're solving for more than one side. The Pythagorean theorem is great for solving for one missing side, but what if you have only one side that you're given? That's where trig comes in. Now, in trig, which is a uh, course in college that you'll take that deals with angles, uh, we we introduce you to, to trig here in geometry. You deal with trig a little bit more in algebra 2. Um, and then it has its own class in college. Uh, it deals with angles and it deals with ratios. Now a ratio is a fraction where you compare two numbers. Now trig ratios are ratios of the lengths of two sides in a right triangle. There are three trig ratios you will learn. You'll learn about sine, cosine, and tangent. And on your calculator you'll see that as an SIN, a COS, and TAN. Now tangent is the first thing that we're going to deal with. In a right triangle, and you can see that this triangle over here has already been labeled hypotenuse, let's say we're dealing with angle A. Inside this triangle you have three sides, but listen to the way that they're described. Based on angle A, and using angle A as a reference, you have an opposite leg, makes sense because it's across the triangle from it, it's opposite. You also have an adjacent leg. And for the rest of this chapter, you will see those denoted as opposite and adjacent. Then you have the hypotenuse, of course. Now tangent deals with the ratio, or the comparison of two numbers, dealing with the opposite leg divided by the adjacent leg. And you can see that written out here. The tangent of A, or angle A, is the length of the leg opposite angle A divided by the length of the leg adjacent to angle A. We can write that as BC over AC. Now, right below this, you'll see that tangent equals opposite over adjacent. Uh, by the end of this chapter, you're going to have three different acronyms or like abbreviations like FBI and CIA. Uh, you're going to have three different abbreviations for sine, cosine, and tangent. The easiest way to remember tangent is TOA. T-O-A, TOA. And again, you'll learn another one for sine and another one for cosine. Uh, very, very simply, tangent is a way to find either an angle or a missing side. By the end of this chapter, you're going to be given maybe one angle and one side and have to solve for all the missing angles and all the missing sides in a right triangle. And trig is the best way to do that. Uh, right now, we're going to use tangent just to get you started on finding angles. Uh, if you look at example one, we're told to find the tangent of S and the tangent of R. Now those could also be written as this, the tangent of angle S and the tangent of angle R. Either way, know that we're not looking for a side anymore, we are looking for angles. Now we're also told to write each answer as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to four places. So over here on the side, I'm going to write the tangent of angle S and the tangent of angle R. Now what we want to do first is at the very top, and I'm going to erase this just to get it out of the way, we are going to write TOA. T equals O over A. Now that T represents our tangent. The O represents the opposite side of our angle and the A represents the adjacent side of our angle. In the first case we're dealing with angle S. Angle S is right here. And so, I need to be able to figure out what fraction deals with the opposite and the adjacent sides. If this is angle S, where is the opposite side? What side is opposite angle S? And I hope that you identify that as 80. Well, when I write my fraction, I want the opposite on top and the adjacent below it. Well, if 80 is across from it, or opposite angle S, what is the adjacent side? We can flip back to our notes and see that if we're dealing with angle A, we have the opposite and we have the adjacent. Adjacent is next to it. 
if you look at this example, what side is adjacent or next to angle S? Be very careful. We don't want to pick the hypotenuse here. We leave the hypotenuse for the different trig functions. Tangent deals with opposite and adjacent. The adjacent side, I hope you can see, is side 18. Now 80 over 18 is our ratio. We want to see if that will reduce. So on my calculator, I'm going to punch in 80 divided by 18, which shows up as a fraction. Then I'm going to hit math, enter, and enter again. And I see that that reduces to 40 over 9. Well, that's my reduced fraction. I'm also told, though, to write it as a decimal, rounded to four places. Well, when I punch in a fraction and turn it into a decimal, I find out that I get the tangent of 80 over 18 ends up being 4.4444. 4, 4, 4. Again, you need to make sure that you got or that you have both a fraction answer and a decimal answer. Let's practice that again with tangent of r. It's still opposite over adjacent. Let me erase some of this so we can get it out of the way. Now we're dealing with this angle, angle r. Can you very quickly identify the opposite side? It is 18. Can you identify the adjacent side? It's 80. It is next to angle R, but it's not the hypotenuse. Well, and much in the same way 80 over 18 reduces to 40 over 9, you should be able to tell that 18 over 80 is going to reduce to 9 over 40. Same numbers, just flipped over, so I can take the reduced fraction and flip it over. I still need this as a decimal, though. So I'm going to take 90, or 9, excuse me, divided by 40, and find out that that as a decimal is 0.225. So I've got my reduced fraction and my reduced dec or my decimal to four places. Well, the calculator only gave me three. That's as far as it goes, so that's as much as I can go. Hopefully you understand that's not too hard. The reason we use tangent is because you can determine length and height. And when I say that, I mean, if you look at this right triangle, tangent deals with the base and the height. If you know that something is going 9 over 40, that means that it's going over 9, or excuse me, rising 9 and over 40. Rising 9 and over 40. Now, if you think about that, that's very similar to something called slope, which deals with rise over run. Tangent allows us to uh, go distances and heights because we're dealing with you know straight up and down and straight left and right, whereas the hypotenuse is on an angle. Tangent allows us to determine rise and run. Uh, tangent is used to find the slope of lines and we're going to see more places by the end of the chapter where tangent is used. But right now what I would like you to do is I would like you to take the second problem in example one and I would like you to pause the video and solve for the tangent of r rounded to two or four decimal places and a reduced fraction and I would like you to find the tangent of angle s. Pause the video and do that now. Now I hope you were able to pause the video and look at the tangent of angle R and the tangent of angle S. First thing we want to do and is identifying our angle. And then since tangent deals with the opposite divided by the adjacent, we want to identify what side is opposite of angle R. Hopefully you recognize that that's the side of 32. And then we're going to divide that by the adjacent side, which is 24. So the tangent of angle R is 32 over 24. Now before I show you my answers, I'm going to go to S and solve for the tangent of angle S. Here's angle S. And if the opposite over the adjacent is tangent, we want to find the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. We get 24 over 32. So here are my answers. The tangent of angle R is 4 over 3, which reduces to 1.6667. The tangent of angle S is 3 over 4, which reduces to 0.75. 
Hopefully you were able to find those. Now let's take a look at your homework where we're going to practice more.